Welcome to this SUSE concession. We are Imovach and Anchor from the system management team at SUSE, which everyone calls the Just Team. And we are here to present you the future evolution of our beloved installer Just. Uh, we will start with a general overview of what, what Agama will be, including a brief look to its software architecture because that structure is actually quite a central point to understand some aspects. And then Imovat will show you the current Agama interface and functionality and will also tell us about the benefits of Agama compared to more traditional installers like Just. Uh, then we will finish the session with a quick summary of the features we are currently developing and some plans for the midterm. But first things first, what is Agama? Well, Agama, which used to be called the installer in the first prototypes, it's simply put a Linux installer based on the same internals than Just. And when I, when I say a Linux installer, I mean an application that basically prepares your machine and then uh, grabs a Linux distribution from some repositories that may be local or remote in the network and allocates that Linux into your, into your hardware and prepares everything to make sure that on subsequent reboots uh, that new Linux system will, will take over. Uh, in the case of SUSE, that means basically just or auto just in the case of unattended installations. In the case of Fedora or Red Hat, that means Anaconda and so on. So what I, what I want to point is that in all cases, a Linux installer is just an application. And as a such, it needs some execution environment to run on top. So that leads to the paradox that to install Linux in your system, the first thing you need to do is to run Linux. So you can then run the installer on top of it. Uh, in the case of uh, SUSE, that means uh, uh, something we call the installation image. That is a very small uh, Linux system that includes only Just and the tools that Just need to do its work. And that is boot uh, via Linux RC, which is a SUSE specific component. And I'm mentioning all that because Agama is just an evolution or a replacement for the very right part of that of that slide you are you are seeing now. So only for uh, what Just currently does. In the in the context of SUSE Alp, there are actually plans to also uh, replace all the other components to also have another minimal Linux system that will be used to run Agama and to have a different system to boot that uh, in the equivalent way to what Linux RC does right now. But those, those components are still under technical discussion. So uh, in order to allow you to test Agama, the Justin have built a live demo, which is a, a, a basically open source Tumbleweed system that runs Agama and opens a browser full screen uh, to access to the Agama web UI. So um, the, the point here is that the experience is far from being uh, the experience you will expect from an installation image because it's not an installation media. It's just a vehicle for everyone to take a look to Agama. So, well, clarifying that, let's focus on, on the topic of the presentation, which is Agama, as, 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 as I already said several times, as an evolution of Just. And you may be wondering why do we need such an evolution? Um, the truth is that Just has served us very well for more than 20 years already and will continue serving us well for several more years to come. That's something I want to state very clearly. But at the same time, we have to recognize that the current Linux world is not uh, the same, exactly the same that it was 20 years ago. 20 years ago, when we set a Linux system, we could take for granted that meant um, a physical hardware with a physical CPU, hard disk, and so on. But nowadays, apart from that reality, we also have other lin kinds of Linux system, like it could be a virtual machine, an instance in a, in a cloud provider. We also have different kind of real hardware like Edge, uh, uh, the one used for Edge computing. We have other abstractions. So yeah, now, now it, it's, it's not so clear when, when you say Linux, uh, Linux system, what you're referring to. Um, also, uh, in order to, to deploy Linux in those systems, uh, 
uh, back in the days you you could be sure that deploying meant installing in the same that I or in the same way I already described uh, with uh, grabbing the package from a repository and so on and so on. But nowadays uh, that can deploying can mean different things. You can deploy Linux by just attaching a certain uh, virtual image to a certain to a certain virtual machine. You can just dump uh, an image into your hardware, and there are other error methods. Um, and not only for installing, also for configuring the system. Uh, in the past, it's something that you used to do while you were installing it, and you used to do it by performing several steps on the system. And now we usually have centralized uh, configuration management system that take care of it, that uh, do the needed operations whenever they detect some operation is needed, and then they, you actually specify what you want in a declarative way, and not as a sequence of, sequence of steps anymore, and so on. And talking about about really accessing those systems, if I tell you remote access, uh, back in the day that meant SSH or maybe VNC, but now remote access is almost the same as saying a browser, a web interface you can connect maybe from your mobile phone. So you connect through your mobile phone to your Linux system and, and configure whatever you want there. So it's a whole new world uh, that, that exists in addition to the traditional Linux world. Um, and we have to admit that just is struggling to fit into some of those scenarios. And Agama is our answer to that. So we usually say that Agama is a service-based installer because as you can see in that diagram, uh, all the important pieces are, are below a certain DBus interface, a, a DBus service that expose all the functionality to other actors, like, for example, the web, the, the, the interface you will use to, to, to control the installation process. But what is even more important, what you see at the very bottom is that just is still there, not with its current graphical interface or, or with its current interface, but all the core of just is still used because we honestly believe just is the most powerful, powerful installer out there. And there are many aspects uh, when installing a Linux system that you have to take into account that just can handle really, really well. And there are some examples there, like, for example, the bootloader. Well, installing uh, the bootloader may look simple in a PC, although it's actually not even in a PC simple anymore. But but we also cover with uh, SUSE products and with SUSE distributions, we also cover S390 mainframes. We cover power PC systems. And, and we also support... Uh, all technologies for secure boot, for uh, trusted computing, and so on. So that 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 gives you a, a very complex matrix of scenarios that just already know how to handle. Um, even even when when I was talking about secure boot, uh, that's actually something that means something completely different depending on the architecture. So it's the same name but for different technologies, and you have to take into account different steps. All all that is something that just can already do very well. And same goes for storage, for example, like um deciding uh, how much uh, how big should a file system be depending on the needs depending if you are using better fs snapshots that are more demanding in terms of size but that have other advantages if you want to use lbm what are the implications of encrypting a system for example encrypting encrypting the system using partitions or user lbm and so on and so on so uh, there is a lot of knowledge already uh, inside just and there is a lot of power that we want to keep for the future. But at, this, uh, at the same time, we don't want to use the JAS interface anymore. So what we do is to expose all, all that technology, all that knowledge through a DBus interface, through a service. And then we connect to that uh, DBus service uh, with the new graphic and the new user interfaces we are providing, providing. And we are right now actually developing two in parallel that are equally powerful and can and both allow to do all the possible operations that are uh, modern web UI and also a command line interface. Um, we will see both now uh, in, in, in subsequent slides. So uh, what I wanted to point is that both are equally powerful and complete and are also not the only uh, way that you can use to control the installation process. And, and I'm saying to control, mm, and I mean to configure the installation process, but also to watch the process to 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 follow the, the installation procedure to to get information about in which step the installation procedure is you can do that 
through the web interface, through the command line interface, or through any other piece of your infrastructure that you can plug into this. You can plug it using the command line interface and some kind of proxy, so you communicate to the device interface, or you can use it just whatever system you want to talk directly to the device interface and then follow the procedure and control the procedure from there. And before jumping to the next slide, there is another blog in that, in, in that diagram that is uh, the one that has other libraries and tools. Because having that, that clear line in the bus also allow us, uh, the just developers, to uh, replace just components with other, with more modern tools in some areas in which just is not as as bright as as I already presented about the storage, bootloader, and so on. There are other areas in which uh, just could do better, or it simply just is not uh, up to date anymore. Uh, there is a clear example which is a localization support, like changing the keyboard map, changing the language. That used to be very complex in the past used to be different on every distribution now it's way more simpler uh, it's uh, kind of a uh, centralized but system d so we are dropping the old uh, code of just that took uh, care of all those complex steps and we are replacing it with a much more trustworthy and simple piece and we'll take care of this but that's something you actually don't need to know you only need to care about the divas api we offer on top so <clears throat> uh, now Imo will uh, present, uh, as I said, uh, the two interface we have already designed it, and, and we'll give you through, through all the adventures that they provide. So thank you, Ankur. Uh, let's start having a look to the most prominent, prominent features of Agama. The first thing uh, I would like to mention is that Agama is a multi-product installer, like Just. Uh, depending on the product you select, uh, the partitioning layout can be uh, slightly different. Uh, it can select a different set of packages for installation. So um, it retains the, this behavior from Just. Actually, the slide, uh, in, in that slide, the screenshot um, is from the live CD that Anchor um, described previously is uh, basically our testing uh, image so you can grab it and, and give it a try and you can see different kind of systems there you have the all base systems alt server alt micro and you can ho also have um, those uh, more let's say conventional systems like OpenSUSE Tumbleweed or OpenSUSE Leap and Agama thanks to JAS is able to install all of them but as said most probably when, when Alp is released, you will get uh, something uh, with a different selection of, of uh, products. Another important point of Agama is the, the, the UI. We're putting quite some effort in having a clear and concise user interface. Uh, once you select the product, you are presented with this screen with uh, displays uh, the, the, the main aspects of the configuration, the, the, the settings, and uh, you can uh, select any of those sections and inspect those settings and change them accordingly to your use case. Uh, so you do not need to go through a wizard-like approach through all the settings of the installation. You just get the, the overview and you decide which part of the, of the settings you want to change. For instance, you might want to install the system on a different disk. OK, that's fine. Just let's go to the storage settings. Or you might be interested in, in, in changing the, the root password or setting a public SSH key. You go to the user settings. So you only need to go to those parts you are interested in. Um, so we are putting quite some effort in making the, the user interface um, easier to, to work with. Um, another area where we are working on actively is uh, the networking setup. Uh, the first thing that we would like to mention is that we have uh, moved from Wicked as the network service for the installation media to Network Manager. So it's an area where we cannot get uh, all the code from JAS and use it in Agama. So we need to rewrite everything from scratch. So we are redesigning our network stack based now on, on Network Manager. Uh, so at this point, we support the basic use cases. Uh, I mean, a cable interface, a wireless interface. Of course, you can set up your IPv address or, or you can rely on the HCP. 
but uh, we are not supporting VLANs, bonding, and, and the, those complex scenarios. To be honest, uh, for complex, really complex scenarios, the, the world has changed quite a lot. So um, perhaps you are not going to to set all those uh, interfaces on, on or all those complex scenarios at installation time, but after booting. And um, maybe you are just going to set up your network for to, to make the installation possible. And then you are going to use any automated uh, configuration system to, to set up the rest. Well, it, it depends on you. But at this point in time, we have basic support for, for, for networking, and we plan to, to extend it further. And another area we're actively working on is in storage settings. But in this case, it's quite different because uh, Jazz is pretty powerful when it comes to a storage configuration. We are just simply shifting the approach. Instead of uh, offering a full-blown partitioner, we are just basically uh, putting the file system in the center. So you only need to, to think in terms of file systems, which file systems you want, the sizes, the types, and, and so on. And um, Agama will come up with a sensible proposal for you. Of course, you can use LVM. You can encrypt your file systems. Um, and we plan to, to add more features. And of course, in the future, we will allow you to, to set up with your partitioning uh, with any other tool and, and reuse it from, from Agama. So it's a work in progress, but we, we are changing the approach uh, a bit. Uh, um, although you don't, cannot see that in the screenshot, we are supporting ISCSI, we are supporting uh, FBL channel over, ether, over Ethernet, sorry, and we are supporting um, DAS devices for S390 mainframes. So there is uh, more to, to talk about the uh, storage configuration that you can see in a screenshot, but I, I guess that you get the idea. And uh, a core component for us is the um, command line interface. It's not an afterthought. It's, uh, it has been there from the very beginning. We started to develop the web UI. At the same time, we started to develop the command line interface. So it should be feature parity um, with the web UI. You should be able to do uh, everything that you can do from the web UI with the command line interface. To be honest, we are not there yet, but um, uh, we are we allowed to change most of the settings already from the command line interface. And you should be able to answer questions or, or do any other kind of stuff that you can do from the web UI. So you should not need the web UI to perform installation. In the sample below, we are basically setting some uh, uh, storage settings, sorry, software settings. Basically, we are selecting the product, we are setting the username, and we are asking Agama to install the installation without having to go through the web UI. And close related with the command line interface, we have the unattended installation. Because we know that many customers and users rely on AutoJust to perform the, the deploy of their systems. So uh, that's another important part of, uh, of Agama. There is an important difference between our unattended installation or Agama's attended installation and AutoJust, which is that Agama uses exactly the same workflow for uh, the automated installation and for the manual installation, which is not the case in AutoJust. In AutoJust, AutoJust has some specific behavior, has some a small difference in the workflow uh, that leads to harder maintenance for, for, for us. So now everything uh, should run the same steps, no matter if you use the command line interface or, um, or a profile, for instance, for, for setting up <coughs> the, the installation system. Uh, when it comes to the auto installation, we are trying two different approaches. One of them is to, to use a profile uh, but instead of using XML, we are using JSONnet. We will have uh, an example in a minute so you can uh, have a, a closer, uh, a better idea. And the second approach is basically uh, using a shell script. We allow you to, to use a shell script that can rely on the command line interface to perform all the step of the, of the installation of, of, or, or the preparation for the installation. Because we want Agama to be easy to integrate on your own workflow. So we are uh, putting quite some effort into, into that part. And last but not least, we would like to mention that we plan to partially support AutoJazz profiles. <clears throat> um, for instance, we, we would like to support tools and classes, ERB, and all those settings from AutoJazz. Uh, 
Of course, not all of the AutoJazz settings are, or features are going to be in Agama. They, they will have a different feature set, but uh, we would like to support um, at least retrieving and, and, and building the, the profile. Uh, let's say the dynamic parts. Here you have the example I promised you a minute ago. Basically, JSONnet is a superset of JSON, so uh, any JSON document is a valid JSONnet. In this example, you have like four different sections setting the, the localization, the software, well, different aspects of the installation. Um, but when it comes to, to offer a dynamic behavior, so you can uh, change the profile uh, um, at installation time, JSONnet offers an, uh, a benefit, which is that it uh, features a full programming language. It contains a standard library and so on. So in this case, uh, Agama injects the hardware information into the profile, and you can go through all the disks and select the biggest one to perform the installation into it. Just an example of dynamic content. So um, now let's have a look to the benefits of Agama um, for the for the new approach. I guess that with all the things that we have talked about, you already have an idea. But we have tried to summarize the benefits in three key points. The first is to have a modern user interface. Uh, JAS was designed to work well, and it works very well in an 80 per, per 24 uh, interface. Uh, it imposed some limitations, especially when we need to develop new features. Uh, we, we feel kind of constrained by, by those requirements. So we thought that going uh, for a web UI it's a it's a the right approach in this case. It uh, enables us to use modern patterns and to use um, a better UI. And you can also use that UI from any other device, your tablet, your phone, or another computer. Uh, so you can see in that screenshot that at the at the right, uh, there's pretty much the same um, overview page that you already saw before but in a narrow uh, screen, and it, it's, it gets adapted to, to different um, sizes and so on. And an important thing is that it's also a future-proof approach because um, <clears throat> the web uh, development will continue to evolve. Um, web technologies will continue to, to improve, and we are already on that boat. So we don't need to, to take care of all of our UI toolkit or, or so on, so we can reduce maintenance costs, and, and, and we are covered for the future. The second key point is integration with any workflow. I have already mentioned already several times. We would like to place nicely with third-party tools so you can uh, integrate the installation process uh, with any other workflow that you are using. Uh, we would like to improve how we report the installation progress because with JAS is, is kind of tricky. Now we can uh, report events happening during installation in which point we are, and you can get that information through the command line interface or through the DBAS API. It doesn't matter. You can you have access to all that information. Uh, so that's really important for us that you can uh, build your own thing with the, uh, and Agama can be part of, of that. Because Agama at the end of, of the day does not matter how you start the installation, or it just uh, have a unified um, API that you can benefit from. And the third point is uh, improve developer experience. Uh, well, using a standard technology or well-established uh, tools makes it easier for us to, to do the development um, work because we don't need to maintain all our tooling. Uh, we can rely on, on on upstream work, and we can contribute to that upstream work too. So it also uh, gave us the opportunity to strike and rewrite some parts with uh, a different tooling and easier to access for newcomers. So we expect also uh, to have more contributions because it's pretty rare to get a contribution for just, but maybe using more, um, let's say, known uh, tooling, is uh, it should be uh, better for getting um, new contributors on board. Uh, so that's basically about the features um, and the benefits. 
let's have a look to Agama's feature in, in the mid-term and, and short-term plans. Okay, so let's go very qu quickly through this because we are almost running out of time, I think. But, well, basically, as Simo said, this is uh, still a project that is, is evolving and we are still adding features to it. So we are currently working actually on, on many areas, uh, like improving the, the support for several architectures. Currently, Agama already working S390 in ARM, in x86 and in, and in power pc architectures we also enabling more uh, more technologies for storage like fiber over, over ethernet or set fcp for for uh, s390 systems and we are also working on several aspects that you can see summarized in, in in that slide like improving the memory consumption and so on but also for the future we already have uh, ambitious plans uh, that includes uh, better integration, for example, with the SUSE customer center in terms of registration and so on. The, the demo, the demo image that you can already use will always is installed from the network or using repositories that are remote. We want to provide in the future some other demo uh, CDs or DVDs that includes the, the, the distribution itself. And well, many other things, none of those things are actually like written in stone. We are constantly adapting the roadmap based on the on the feedback we get from yeah, users and customers. So that's basically all we wanted to present. Uh, just uh, remind uh, everyone that uh, this is an open source project. This is free software. So it's completely developed in the open. There you can see the project page. We have uh, all the source code. At, um, at, at GitHub, uh, you can reach easily the developers in the usual channels you could use to to reach the just developers because what we are basically the same set of people, and we are looking forward any feedback, uh, any any criticism or any contribution from anyone out there. So yeah, just please stay in touch and thanks for your attention.